Good morning, class. So this is our social studies lesson five. And today what we're actually learning about are um, Aboriginal structures. So those are like shelters that they live in. And uh, first of all, I'm going to show you some articles. And then you're actually going to create a slideshow about um, one of the four that you choose. Uh, so let's get started. All right. So the first option um, that you could choose is igloos. You've probably heard of igloos before. Um, they are made out of snow. Um, yeah. So the Inuit, so that's the northern, um, the north, north of Canada. Like north of where we live in Canada, uh, the Inuit were nomadic people. So they rarely stayed in one place for, for very long. So nomadic means moves from place to place. Oh, this means their houses had to be quick and easy to build. During the summer, the Inuit built tents out of driftwood or poles covered with animal skins, mostly caribou or seal skin. These tents were similar to teepees down a ring of large rocks around the base held down the tent skin covering during the winter inuit families would follow the hunt they needed a shelter that would keep them warm and protect them from harsh winter weather um so when it says follow the hunt what it's talking about is it follows the food because they hunt to eat to survive right All right the most common winter shelter was a uh, no house. So I'm gonna let you look at this picture. I see some people and some animals, and I see lots of igloos. And look at this. I see lots of snow here, and the snowy hills and mountains. Cool. More commonly known as an igloo. So igloos are also called snow houses. An igloo is basically a dome, looks like like a top of a circle of ice cubes and snow, so kind of like the top of a sphere. Snow is used because the air pockets in the snow act like insulation. Oh my goodness, we were actually talking about insulators. Remember in science when we were talking about energy and you're remembering that insulators, they um, kind of like when you're looking at your cloth and it was keeping the heat inside. Um, so snow act like, acts like an insulation. Um, cool. The short door opening and a tunnel in front of the igloo stops the heat from flowing outside and keeps the igloo warmer than the outside weather. That's really cool. So they're using science without, probably without even thinking about the science behind it. Like they understand what's happening. They want to keep the heat inside so they can survive. Um, but this is a concept in science that we were just looking at. So that's really cool. Uh, the Inuit often take one block of snow out of the igloo structure to form a window. Some Inuit even make a hole through the ice inside of the dome to be able to ice fish inside their homes. That's really cool. So they can actually fish from inside their house because it's so cold outside that they should not go outside at certain times of year. An Inuit man can build an igloo in about an hour. So this is what the inside of the igloo looks like. And that's the outside. There's their little holes. Oh, and this is the fishing pole coming out. Cool, huh? All right, so if you would like to do igloo um, for your PowerPoint, you can do, you can choose it and follow the instructions for that. Um, but first, I want you to hear all four, of course. All right, the next one, it's kind of a word maybe you've never heard before. It's called a wigwam or wigwam. Uh, you can actually, it's kind of like tomato, tomato. You, from what I've talked, from who I've talked to, um, you, some people say wigwam, some people say wigwam. Yeah. So the Ojibwa, Mi'kmaq, and other Aboriginal groups lived in wigwams. A wigwam is a round building with a round top. It was made from birch tree logs, covered again with bark. So it's kind of like the shape of an igloo, but it's not made out of snow. Some were also colored, covered with mats or hide, so animal skin. Wigwams could be quite large, about 10 to 12 feet long and six to eight feet tall. Extended families, 
So that's like cousins and uncles and aunts, kids, parents, and grandparents all lived together in a one wigwam. Most wigwams were made as fixed shelters. That means that they aren't able to move. Some were a mix of permanent and portable. So that means some of them could move, some of them stayed in the same place. This is the structure, what it's made of. So some of it's made out of animal skin, and when it was talking about mats, it could be made out of like plants, right? And tree bark. The Ajibwa, for example, made their wigwams by covering a wood frame with hide and then covering the hide with bark. When an Ajibwa family moved to a new location, the hide was rolled up and taken with them. So they didn't just leave it there. They didn't just throw it out. They would recycle it by reusing it. The frame stayed. When they returned the following year or several years later, they simply unrolled the covering they always carried and placed it on the frame. So because the frame's not very easy to move, it's not portable, they would actually leave the frame and they would just bring the parts that go on the top and then reuse that wherever they moved. Because remember when they said they followed the hunt or that, I think that was the, um, I think that was the Inuit people that lived in the, igloos. Um, so these people probably had to follow the hunt too if they were nomadic, if they were moving around a lot um, so that they could survive, right? They need to follow food. If a frame was not available, they would make a new one. So in the center of the wigwam, there was a fire pit which heated the wigwam in cold weather and was used for cooking in rainy weather. Sleeping platforms with beds made with dried grasses and covered with deer skin were built at least halfway around the wigwam and used as seats during the daytime. The space beneath the plant beneath the platforms was used for storage. Does anyone else have like storage under their beds? I know um, under both of my daughter's beds, they have uh, bins for some extra toys and things like that. So that's cool. Good connection. Uh, woven mats or deer skins were used as floor coverings. I think they used a lot of animals and nature to make their houses, right? A lot of animal parts. It's really great because that that's how they stay warm. They're very um, creative that way. They use what's around them. All right, the third one, long houses. The Huron and Iroquois are two Aboriginal groups that lived in long houses. Um, if you've ever been to the BC Royal Museum, outside the front, they have a big totem pole and a little house there, and it's like a long house. The cedar longhouses were massive, plank-covered buildings, which could withstand heavy storms. The carver stripped the bark off the tree while it still stood. This killed the tree and dried it out. A cut was then made into the tree, and a wedge was inserted and hit with a maul, Ooh, that's one of the tools we talked about. I think that's the, like, the stick with the rock part. Until a slab came away cleanly. The planks were then trimmed to the right size and smoothed with adzies. I'm not sure what adzies are. Uh, the planks were rested against supporting poles to form the sides of the house. So I don't know what the word adzies means. So if you don't know a word, a good way to look is to look it up in a dictionary or you can look it up on the internet. So adzies is a tool similar to an axe with an arch blade at the right angle to the handle used for cutting or shaping large pieces of wood. Very cool. The planks were rested against supporting poles to form the sides of the house. This is a picture of a long house. That's interesting how they would peel the bark and then the tree would die and they would hollow it out. That's really cool. Oh, to make the roof, heavy planks were anchored with heavy poles and stones and then covered with bark. Inside, the supporting beams were carved and decorated. There, was, there were no windows and only one door at the end of the house. A fire pit was in the center of the house and there was a hole in the roof to allow smoke to escape. If you had a fire in your house and nowhere for the smoke to go, you would, you would not be healthy. You could die. Um, so they would have a hole in the middle of their house for the smoke to go out. 
There was two levels inside. The second level provided sleeping room for as many as 20 to 40 people. Oh my goodness. That is bigger than our class. 20 is our class size. So they would have almost double sometimes the amount of students in our class. Wow. All related to each other. So they were all family. Each house was named and the family's totem carved into a large pole at the front of the house. All right, and the fourth one are teepees. Uh, maybe you've heard of teepees before. Uh, sometimes people spell it T-I-P-I. -I. Um, there's two different ways depending on who, who's using the term. Aboriginal cultures, the plains, so that's kind of like um, the, the prairies, so like Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, uh, such as Blackfoot and Sioux, lived in teepees. Sometimes teepees is written as teepees, but they are the same structure. That's what I just said. Sorry. <laughs> that was there. A teepee is made of a cone-shaped wooden frame with a covering of a buffalo hide. So again, they're using animal skin. Uh, like modern tents, teepees are made to set up and take down quickly. People of the plains traveled to follow the buffalo herds. Again, traveling for food. Very cool. As a tribe moved from place to place, each family would bring their teepee poles and hide tent along with them. Look at that. They're bringing it with them. They're also nomadic. They're moving. Teepees could be anywhere from 12 to 20 feet tall. Uh, when I was talking about nomadic, um, it's the ones that move. So I wouldn't think the, the long house is not movable. <laughs> um, so the teepee is um, the wigwams. They would leave the structure, but they would move. So they were nomadic. And also the, um, the igloos. They would probably have to move um, certain times, remember, to follow the food. And they would have more of a summer house than a winter house. Um, so the... The teepees are also nomadic. Teepees could be anywhere from 12 to 20 feet tall. That is very huge. Wow. Uh, so let me compare something that's 20 feet tall for you, okay? Um, how high is 20 feet? Let's see if there's a good comparison here. What does 20 feet tall look like? Hmm. All right, let me do a comparison. That's a good one. It's about as tall as a telephone pole. So if you ever see telephone poles outside, um, they are about 20 feet tall. Interesting. So some teepees are that high. That is huge. Um, a family could set up a teepee in half an hour. It takes about 30 minutes to set up a teepee. So the family would work together. Really cool. In the summer, the covering would be raised to allow for a large gap at the bottom. This gap let cool air flow through the teepee and keep the inside cooled. In the winter, extra covering and insulation, ooh, keeping the heat in, such as grass, were used to help keep the teepee warm. In the center of the teepee, a fire would be built. There was a hole at the top to let out smoke. So um, just like in the longhouse, they had a hole in the roof um, to let the smoke out so they could have a fire inside. And the teepee had one as well. Buffalo hides were also used for their beds and blankets to keep their homes warm. Um, so why are the buffalo important to these people? It provides clothing. It provides shelter. It provides food. That's really important. Those are like all their basic needs. Wow. All right, so those are the four choices. Um, so I also attach the document with all of these, um, these parts. You do not have to worry about this page. Um, this part is on the document, um, but you do not have to worry about it. Um, so you just pick if you wanna do igloos, if you wanna do wigwams, if you wanna do um, long houses, and if you wanna do so you decide and then I want you to reread it um, and then once you're done you're going to actually be making a little PowerPoint. Uh, so this is what the slides are going to look like that you get. Aboriginal structures. 
Um, so I want you to write the name of the place you want. So maybe you're doing PP, right? Um, so you would write PP here. And all the instructions are actually on this. Step one, write the name of your structure you chose as the title of this slideshow. Um, so if you wanted to write it here, you could, or you can write it here. That's up to you. Step two, find a picture off Kittle of your structure. So if I was to go to Kittle, K-I-D-D-L-E, there we go. And I could just write PP, right? Or maybe you're writing long houses, or maybe you're writing wigwam, or maybe you're writing igloo. And you can go to images, and I'm glad you guys all um, have practiced. Most of you have practiced the copying and pasting. Um, so what you do is you, if you have a Chromebook, you double click. If you have a regular mouse, you right click. Uh, copy image, you pick your image, and then you actually paste it onto a new page, right? If you want to put on the title of the page, you can, or you can put it here, as long as you have a photo. Uh, I'm just going to delete that because that's your job to do your own, right? Uh, step three, share two to three facts about the structure. Some possibilities are, what is it made of? Name the groups that live there. Um, add them to the PowerPoint, however you like. So I remember that PPs have a, a hole in the roof for smoke. Um, another thing is that TPs have an opening around it in the summer to keep, uh, to allow uh, TP to be cool, right? Uh, a third thing about TP. For me, that I would write, PPs could be can be twenty feet tall. So there's actually so many facts, and um, you have to write down a minimum of two to four. You can write them each on their own slide. Remember, Control M gives you another slide, or you can just right click and go new slide. Um, so you need to give me two to four facts about the structure. If you want to do more than one photo, you can, um, but you do not have to. Um, here are some ideas if you're stuck. What is it made of? So is it made of animal hide? Is it made of snow? Uh, name the groups that live there. So if you were to go back to the reading part, ooh, on the TPs, Aboriginal structures of the plains, such as the Blackfoot and Sioux are the groups that live lived in the TP here, okay? Um, so I could write that. Um, the CU lived in TPs, right? And step four would be to delete this slide. So I'd click on it, I could right click and hit delete, or I could actually just hit the delete button on my keyboard. Control Z, because I'm not deleting that for you. And step four would be to submit, um, yeah, which would either be here or it would be on your assignment page. Yeah, so I can't wait to see um, which one you choose and what you have to say about it. Good luck with that. I know you guys are gonna do great. If you have any questions, let me know. I love, I love this part when you actually learn about the Aboriginal structures. It's one of my favorite part of social studies. Last year, I, I actually had my class make structures. They made teepees, they made igloos, they made wigwams out of natural products in the earth. Um, maybe we'll be able to do that this year. Um, we'll, we'll see. Um, but if not, I'll show you some pictures of what my students made. They were incredible. All right. Uh, good luck and let me know if you need any help.